So this is a new flight controller from Flight One. This is the Cricket OSD. So this is a brand new flight controller from Flight One. This is the Cricket version of the Revolt OSD. A 30 by 30 with a four millimeter hull, standard flight controller. It's running a F405 MPU. And they did something different. They put a new gyro on this. Uh, there's only one other board. The, the Revolt boards run this same gyro, but uh, no other flight controllers run these. These are the six, uh, excuse me, the, these are the 20602 gyros. Um, they, they take better advantage of Flight One's code and allow this to run at 32K. Uh, that should give it really stable performance. This will also accept up to a 6S LiPo. So much like Betaflight, this comes with its own OSD. It's got programmable LEDs, SBUS inversion. So this has an integrated buzzer driver, full telemetry, ESC flashing. So what's different about Flight 1 and the way they do things is you can actually do everything that you need to do through your goggles and with the controller. So this has a built-in ESC flashing and configuration, which is kind of game-changing because you, you no longer need a laptop on the field uh, to set this up, which that's, that's cool. That's really cool. So this has three serial UARTs. I kind of wish it had more. Um, I think in this day and age, between running GPS and running Crossfire, and I, I mean, there's there's just three to me is not enough. So this is uh, expandable for Bluetooth. It's also expandable for GPS. And this says it weighs six grams. I just weighed it, it comes out to eight grams. So I'm gonna have to check my scale. I think it's a little bit off because this is now two items that I've, uh, weighed and they're just just a little bit off uh, in the packaging they actually shipped two sets of gummies we've got the purple and the black and i'm not entirely sure these the black ones are kind of a softer gummy than the purple ones and the black ones were stapled to the package uh, as almost an afterthought so i'm assuming people are having trouble with the purple ones and they went with the softer ones so just know that there might be something with that. If there is, I will definitely get back to you guys and let you know. What separates this flight controller from many of the other Flight One controllers, and the main reason why I went with this board over all the other ones, is they don't have any pin headers that are soldered on here. Everything's a solder pad, which greatly excites me because we're not going to have the vibration issues that we would have otherwise. Um, now, if you do want to run for some crazy reason, pin headers, uh, all the stuff is right here and it's already pre-tinned. So um, you can go ahead and do that if you want. So I want to take the time and go over a lot of these solder pads. Uh, many of these are not marked. As you can see, this whole right side are not marked and then you've got this left side here there's a few of them not marked and a lot of these are important pads so i want to take the time and go over these uh, just to make your life a lot easier when you're building this uh, up top here we have the led ground we have the led positive and over here we have the buzzer positive and the buzzer ground so with these the uh, the grounds are on the outside and the positives are on the inside. Uh, going down this right side here, uh, these first four, we have CS, SCK, MISO, and MOSI. Below that, we have a 5 volt positive pad in the ground. Next, we have our motor signal wires. We're going to start with motor 4, motor 3, motor 2, and motor 1. Then we have ground. And then these final two pads 
Uh, we have TX6, or that can be a current pad. And we have down the bottom here, VBAT. So for these pads here, this is your TX6. Um, if you're going to do a current sensor with BL Heli 32 or BL Heli S, there's different configurations that we need to do here. So the way this works is we've got current on the right here. In the center, we've got current TX6. And then on the left, we have TX6. So if you're going to have BL Heli 32, we're going to bridge this TX6 pad and the current TX6. So that's these left two pads we're going to bridge. If we've got BL Heli S with a current sensor, we're going to bridge current and current TX. So those are the two right pads. And if we have BL Heli S without current sensor, then we leave it alone. Uh, next, we have our ground, our 5 volt, our 3.3 volt, our TX4, our ground. Then we have another 5 volt pad. And then we got RX3 and TX1. Over here, we're going to do something similar with the solder bridging. If we need an inverted signal, we're going to do something here. So the way these pads are laid out, on the right we have normal, in the center we have TX4, and on the left we have invert. So if we want our TX4 pad to be normal, we bridge these right two pads, and if we want to invert that signal, we bridge the left two pads. Similar to over here, this is TX1. If we want to invert it, uh, we're going to do the right two pads, and if we want to run it normal, we're going to do the left two pads, and that is for TX1. The way these pads are laid out is inverted on the bottom, TX in the middle, and normal on the top. Finally, we have our VBAT, we have our ground, we have our video out to the VTX, we have our smart audio, which is TX3. Uh, and that's that's going to be for your VTX. Next, we have our camera control. On top of that, we have our video in. That's going to be from your camera. On top of that, we have our ground pad. And finally, we have our 5 volts for the camera. So those are the necessary pads that we're going to use as we build and if you notice there are some other pads here like we have vbus here dm dp and ground um we got a couple pads here i'm not sure what these are rx4 and rssi swd and swc three volt ground rx1 rx6 and tx6 so that's the general layout of all the solder points on this board. Uh, hopefully that helps because these are really tiny. And over here, obviously there's, there's just nothing marked. So when you're putting that together, um, you, you can totally reference this video. Now I'll go ahead and give you a good shot of the back of this board as well. Okay, on the bottom of the board, you'll notice we have broken out pads for pin headers should we want to use them and then all of the components are listed for each of these various pads and as you can see I mean this is your normal style uh, yeah so as you can see this is a uh, 1.2 millimeter no this is a 1.6 millimeter chisel tip and you can obviously see that uh, that's gonna be way too big to solder with. So just know that uh, these, this is soldering in a microfine, uh, you're gonna need a, a magnifying glass to solder many of these pads. So I'd imagine most of us are not gonna to be touching any of these, but it is nice to know that if we want to add stuff, we can later. Um, okay, uh, earlier I said I was not sure 
what these two do. These are your, uh, if you wanted to put a boot button there. So that's a real quick look at the Flight One Cricket Revolt OSD flight controller. I am excited to get this into a build. I've never flown Flight One before, so yeah. If you guys have flown Flight One before, leave me a comment below. Let me know how it is. If you like it, if you hate it, um, if you are already an owner of this flight controller. Um, and if you found this video helpful, click that thumbs up button. It really helps out. And if you haven't done it already, uh, like 80% of you have not, go ahead and punch that subscribe button because you only get to do it once and it's fun. And I'll catch you later. Peace.